Man, our timing is just impeccable, isn't it? You know, this snow is really heavy for February. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today, a special one. Today we die. Today marks the first episode where Angus is a legitimate employee of Junkyard Digs. <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> it's taken three years of pestering, but he is finally working for us, which means we can crank out even better content even faster. Step one of our crusade of content is going to be cleaning up the yard in terms of finishing all the projects that have been parked or sidelined in the last six years. God Not has spoken. <laughs> it is time to start. If you guys don't recognize this truck, let me bring you up to speed quick. Last fall, Mook and I picked up this 1978 square body, brought it home, and then built up the motor under a tree in the backyard with only used parts. I fought the carburetor a bunch, the thing didn't run great, the brakes were locked up in the front, but nonetheless, we were able to take it up on the road and do a burnout. Ever since then, the truck has been sitting in the backyard until just a couple weeks ago, we moved it in the tow truck video, during which we de-beated one of the back tires. So that's our first step for today. Get the back of this truck up in the air with the tow truck, pop that tire off, take it to town, and get her aired up. Once that was done, we were ready to haul it to town, and what better thing to pull a square body with than a square body? A death machine. After lining up, we unfolded the stinger and then backed into position, threw our rods in, and then strapped everything down. That was pretty good, actually. Much slower than using the trailer. Way more work, but much more aesthetic. Okay, so the GMC is in the shop. Step one to kick things off here. We're gonna see if this thing still runs. In theory, it should. But if I remember right, it didn't run worth a crap. Uh, the starter, I think the key was actually an issue in hindsight. Still running off a bucket of gas. And now I see we have a coolant leaked to add to the list. So yeah, let's uh, hook the battery up, which I've forgotten here all winter. That's fine. We'll hook that up, get her crank, get some fuel in it and see what it does. So remember, I started this with a screwdriver each time. It was a huge pain in the ass. And I probably burnt a hole through the header by now, but the screwdriver melted pretty much away. So I'm gonna actually get the button and do it right. Why is that one marker on? That just sounds like a Bendex to me. What are the odds it seized while it's at? Pretty low, right? Nope, it's totally fine. This is not cranking. All right, let's pull the starter out. I think I did this last time. Pulled it out and it was just fine. So let's do it again. What'd you find, sir? A uh, starter. A bunch of shims. <laughs> good, good. Well, that works every time. What, what the, the heck? What did we do? It was just kicking the, the Bendix out and holding, so. We fixed it. <laughs> let's test for power in the truck. If there is power, we'll get a new one. If there isn't, we'll put it back in and fix that. Oh, it's just like climbing into the old Corolla. <laughs> Hit the key. Oh, that works just fine. Okay. So we got a starter issue. To town. Uh, Actually, you know, if we're smart, we got to take those calipers in for cores, right? Oh, yeah. Let's just take it off. Let's do it all. Okay, front brakes. The brakes on this truck work. Too well, I've heard. Too well. For instance, I'll, I'll let you be the guest for exhibit B. Really good. <laughs> Works swimmingly. That's probably most likely this guy right here, this brake hose being swollen internally. In fact, my bet is if we took that brake hose off or just loosened it, that wheel would spin again. This would be a great example. I'll get the wrench. Let's try it. We never touched the pedal, so it's interesting these still have pressure in them. Usually they bleed back slowly. It's drippy. You got fluid? There it is. Sure as hell, that's a bad hose. Look at that. One finger after just relieving some pressure. It was like two drops came out of this thing. But Literally, there's two drops right there. That's incredible. All right, new hoses. There's a chance these brakes are still just fine and they just need hoses. 
That would be nice, but what are we going to do for the rest of this episode? Aren't you the guy that does breaks on YouTube? <laughs> Aren't we the guys that do breaks on YouTube? I guess now. Hmm. Second guessing a lot of things, I see. <laughs> Well, I mean, actually, the pads look good. I don't know, man. Those might be just fine. Let's pop the other side off just to make sure there's nothing crazy hiding there. I like that. But if these both look but just like this, yeah, we could run these. They operate just fine. Yeah, and look at this tire. It stands up all on its own, too. That one's a little rusty. But you know what it'll do? It'll self-clearance. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I was just thinking, man, this doesn't look quite like it usually does. And... I don't think this one's tight. No way that's even the right size. I bet this thing moves up and down like an inch. Oh, I see the marks where it does. It's, it's literally been rubbing up and down on the frame. <laughs> okay, we'll put that one on the list. Uh, square body Chevys and Chevys of this era in general with the independent front suspension, they have this like triple mounted brake hose for the fronts and it's, uh, it's really good. It's universally loved. Nobody's ever disliked this. Uh, definitely not me, definitely not Dalton. So I'm taking that off. All the other GMs besides the truck are pretty okay. Lest we forget the vans. Oh, I bet the vans are like this. Someone you don't even watch Dalton's channel, do you? I watch Dalton. I've been watching. Dude, look at this shock. Oh, that's not right. It's about to pull a washer through. What did you ask me when you came over here and bothered me? To what? tell us about the brake hose. It's, it's messed up. I don't know what you Boy, want from me. How to take it off. I got, undo it. <laughs> Yeah, there's a 916th head bolt on the back side of the caliper, banjo bolt, blah, 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 science and math. Take this off, he uses a half inch nut and a, a metric socket maybe on the inside. I don't know yet. Uh, this takes like a million sixteenths on the inside and a five eighths on the outside and undo the line and it's, it's so awful. What was that? Is that what you wanted? Perfect, thank Good. you. While Angus worked on replacing his favorite brake line ever, I headed to the back of the truck to work on the really ugly, unlevel, way too long, uneven exhaust tips that were sticking out past the bumper. With those out of the way, I put some turndowns on that looked way better, and then we stuck a new starter up into the truck. With all that done, while it was still up in the air, Angus grabbed the grease gun and greased up a few zerks just to notice that our power steering box was leaking a lot. Now, Riley's has the power steering shaft seal kit in stock. I've never done one of those before. I've never touched one. I've got a number of vehicles that could use one. This one included because it's left quite the puddle on the floor coming out of the bottom of the box right here. So I think we're going to tackle that as well. But first, let's see if this thing fires up. All right, Mr. Gus. Let's see if that starter works. Oh yeah, that's what we're looking for. Give her some cranks. Let's fill her up, see if she fires. Check for fuel quick. Okay, you should be ready to light off potentially. Oh, hang on. I see a spark. Crank it again. One more time. There's a spark jumping out of this boot down here. These are brand new. How's that work? It's got spark, clearly. Go ahead. Oh. All things considered, that actually runs pretty good. Front plug on this side just has a spark jumping to everything around it. That's good. Oh, I bet it's cracked porcelain. Let's pull it out and check. Well, sure enough. Yeah, there's a crack right there. I think this was part of the rebuild this as if I was a big Chevy fanatic under a tree drinking bush lights and twisted teas. I can't believe they're not orange. Yeah, I, well, I think I wire wheeled them. You went above and beyond. I really did. All right, let's get a new plug in there. I found some Autolite 25s. I think those are just a touch colder than a 26. Huh. So that should, hot then. <laughs> that should work just fine. It's good enough for a Chevy. Yeah, we're not racing the thing. Wait, is there only four? Yeah, did you want more than that? Oh, good. Well, we'll just pick our four favorite cylinders, I guess. Buy more another time. I can already think of what my four favorite cylinders are. The four in the front, because they're the easiest to get to. <laughs> I like it. Uh, I didn't need to climb up there after all. There's a spare spark plug in the radiator. Oh. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Why didn't you think of that? I don't know. I forgot to look at the radiator for spark plugs. It should be the first place you look. It is a Chevy. 
Okay, we've picked our four favorite slash easiest to reach cylinders and they have new spark plugs. So, should run 50% better, right? How much I trust that thrice rebuilt carburetor still. One. It's idling though. It is. Got oil pressure and stuff. Uh, allegedly 50 psi. Hell yeah. A little harder. Yeah, there it is. It's a little bit of a lean condition there or something. With that, we should have working brakes and an engine that runs unfortunately it's a little dark to go for a test drive on camera what do you say we dig into that leaky power steering box let's do it we're going to take our pitman arm off here from below to do this go down to o'reilly's rent one of these or buy one they're pretty cheap to get online this is a pitman arm puller it doesn't fit oh that's a tie rod end puller that's not a pitman arm puller disregard ah there we go <laughs> that's not supposed to be like that that's supposed to be like impact on a puller. Okay, so once that's out of your way, <laughs> we need to take off this rag joint up here. We've got two power steering hoses and some bolts on the inside of the frame that we gotta pop off too. You could probably do this on the vehicle, but thankfully on these square bodies, this is easy to get to, so we can just take it off and make it a lot easier to film and work on. I am prepared. I am inevitable. What? <laughs> All right, well. There she is. This taco is <laughs> right through me. <laughs> Jesus. That's gonna itch when it dries. Ew. Okay, uh, completely winging it here because we've never done this before. We all get to learn together. I'm very curious to see what this thing, the adjuster does and how it works. According to the internet. We take this cap off. So this is our pinion shaft here. This has, I believe, an O-ring up here and a couple seals down in the bottom and some C-clips. And then there's also some seals in the input shaft side over here that we could redo. These ones like to leak as well. Ours appears to be this guy hither. There's a thick one and a thin one in here. Good news, it's still here. <laughs> so it looks like this is at a taper. And those are at a taper down in here. I think maybe tightening this nut pushes this portion of the shaft down because this is probably on a bearing separate from the cap. So if you loosen this, run this in, tighten it again, you're physically moving this yeah, down. down. And the way this is tapered, it you're would, gonna force would... more engagement down against those receiving gears. I just feel like for some reason, every time we go to adjust these, I'd make them longer. It's probably why it never gets any better. Huh, weird. <laughs> as far as this, there's a, a bearing down in there, some seals. Pretty simple, actually. I, this is a worm gear that moves this these teeth here back and forth. Interesting. <laughs> that was fun. Stuff comes out of there. Now what? Uh, put it back together. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how that works. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Hopefully this stops leaking magically. Okay, there's one washer. And then I believe a thin seal. Come here, you. Hey, you laugh, but that worked. Other washer. There she goes. Okay. Yeah, those are those are rock hard seals right there. And the insides are pretty worn, so. Oh, there's our leak. This was actually way easier than I had anticipated. So far. So far. Thank you, sir. I believe we'll take a hammer and a punch and knock this outer hex off. Whoop, yep. There she goes. Yeah. Now. This guy, dude in the forum, had some big goofy thing with two pins. 
We get two drill bits and a wrench. How about a hex bit? These are pretty hard, right? Oh, -ho! that was actually effortless. I probably could have done that with the pliers. Whoa! There's our O-ring. Yeah, not what I was expecting. Oh, this should be a thrust bearing. Oh, yeah. Now, to save us all a couple hours of work, if you guys are looking to do the input shaft seals and the pinion seals, stop right here. Don't do this. Don't pull this little valve out. When the caps are off, avoid turning any internal components in the steering box or else you'll wind up like we did and some of the balls might fall out of the ball screw in the bottom and jam up the steering box. If this happens, don't worry. There's good news and bad news. The good news is that this is a perfect time to replace all the seals in the steering box. The bad news is that you're taking that whole son of a gun apart. Now usually I like to show you guys how to do this and we did try to shoot a little tutorial here but I'm honestly not comfortable saying I have enough experience yet to teach anyone how to do this. Thankfully however there are people out there on the internet that have done this a bunch of times and there's a lot of great videos that you can find on YouTube of rebuilding Saginaw steering boxes. It's not that hard, it's just it can be a little fidgety. Um, it may have to end up doing it once or twice to get it right. It can't be a pain. Wait what? Good luck, I think is what that meant. It just stops? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wait, hang on. If my 19 minute video shows up at three minutes, switch to Internet Explorer or watch on my Facebook page. Oh, yep, yeah, look at that. There's the full thing. Once the whole box was resealed and properly reassembled, we finally put the seals in the adjustable input shaft bearing like we had intended in the very beginning. By the way, this right here that I'm working on is an adjustment that no one ever talks about on steering boxes. This adjusts the play in the ball screw, while the little nut on top you're probably familiar with just does the play in the large gear mesh. All right, there we go. We've officially made a Saginaw power steering box. Probably not leak and probably not work. Regardless, this is done so we can go ahead and adjust it and put it back in the vehicle. You know, we essentially started this just planning for some simple surgery, but it died midway through and we wound up with a good taxidermy. May not work, but man, they'll look good on the shelf. <laughs> That's actually tight this time. With our surprise steering box rebuild out of the way, we moved on to fixing the front shocks. There, you come over here. Fish this back through. I can't believe that worked. Uh, that's supposed to be a hex. Oh my god. It currently has decided to not be that. It's got some miles on it. Oh my god. I don't think our hardware kit accounts for this. <laughs> I don't think so either. That's... Hmm. That's nature at work right there. <laughs> we can weld a washer right here somehow. All right, so our hole is all wallered out from that shock bouncing around. Honestly, from the way it looks, that happened on the shock that was on this truck before that one that we just took off, and they threw a bunch of washers in there expecting it to hold, and believe it or not, it didn't hold. So we found this big old washer thing sitting around. We're going to tack this in place and call it good. What do you think? The angle is somewhere about like. Schmeh? Schmeh. Schmeh. Alright, there we go. I've been the best weld of my life. Crazy what happens when you remember to put a new tip in your welder for the first time in a year and a half. Alright, one more on the other side and bolt some shocks in. Alright, got our washers welded into each side. Look at that doesn't move anymore. Fantastic. There we go. Get some bolts in and shocks are done. With all of our mechanical work finished on the front end, we put the truck back down and I spent a couple hours chasing down some bad grounds and screwed up wiring in the front harness. Okay, so I was getting ground where I wasn't supposed to have it and no power to anything. So I pulled the sheath back here because I saw a bunch of tape that wasn't factory. And sure enough, there's just a bunch of random crap going on. Like, none of this is right. I'm just gonna rewire all of this to be correct. And then we should have marker lights. Woohoo! Let me get a yeehaw from the audience. Yeehaw! <laughs> While I finished up the wiring, Angus did some work on the fuel system and got one of our tanks plumbed up and working. With that done, it was time to throw the front tires back on and go for a test drive. Great. 
sure that fell off. Wow, we made it far. Nothing fencing wire can't fix. Let's see if we made the car wash. Wee. It drives much better now that the brakes actually like, let the wheels spin. Hard to believe, I know. God, this wheel is so stupid. I need to oil the clutch really bad, too. Uh, it runs fantastic now. The front ride's nice, the back is stiff. What did you say this had seven springs on it or something? Yeah, this has one of the highest spring rates that you can have on a half ton Chevy of this era. I'm not gonna lie, it ran great. That was that was kind of spicy too. What the hell? Look, why did it start running so good? We might be done. <laughs> like clean the truck, call her good. Fixed. It drives fantastic. Ah! The brakes work good. All right, hang on, Summer. Here we go. Here. Ah! Holy shit. <laughs> that was like half throttle. <laughs> it's doing pretty okay. Dude, this thing runs fantastic suddenly. We put four spark plugs in. Imagine if we put the other four in. <laughs> These tires would never last. <laughs> All right, well, let's swing into the car wash here and give her a bath because it deserves it. It runs perfect. Not to mention, we have nothing else that we can do to it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I was planning on fixing the whole engine part, but one spark plug and a look at the fuel thing up seems to have fixed that. Huh. All right, bath time. Despite being really gross, it's very nice in here. There's one little draft through this back window, and it's not even loud. Like, all that work we did to that F100 last week is, it's about this quiet in there too. Yeah, I have decided she needs a little more accelerator pump, or I think a larger squirter, because I think I found one off a random two barrel. That's probably too small. If I stab the gas, Stumbles for a second because it gets lean. That's a lean backfire. Yeah. So that's just carburetor. I can fix that easy. All right. A couple more miles. Other than that, though, this thing runs really good. Exactly perfect. I felt it pick up a cylinder at the end there. I think we better put those other four brand new spark plugs in as well. No trespassing! What are you working on? High performance Pontiac stuff. Ooh. Hey, you want to help me give a truck a makeover? A makeover? I don't know how to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> Here, maybe this helps. Probably won't hurt. <laughs> I think it looks good just the way it is. Have you seen the roof? <laughs> I think we could break the scotch bright out and a little something here and there and yep. make that shinier. Make it a little better for the old make marketplace it at least look photos. Cleaner. Yep. yep. All right, here's the magic stuff. This isn't the scotch bright you buy from Dollar General, right? No. This stuff's different. You have to go to the parts store to get the good stuff. This is automotive. I tried some of this on when I did a Comet watch once at Dollar General and it scratched the shit out of the car. It'll scratch the wheat. You do this, you can paint it, it'll stick. This is what you did to the roof of that truck? 
Yeah, roof and hood, and then I put uh, a satin clear coat over it so it wouldn't get oh. worse. Well, just a uh, spray can, right? Uh, no, you can buy it. Thick. It's duple color. They call it ready to spray. It's too thick. I like to thin it a little. And they make it a gloss clear and a satin clear. Ooh, look at that. That's patina. Yeah, you can get that all shined up. Yeah, that's still like a lot better You can finish. still see the color. Yeah, and yeah. feel how much nicer it that's, feels. You can hear it. I wouldn't do this on a clear coat or a shiny paint job. No, I only want to do it if you're... If your truck looks like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you do it to paint. If you're prepping something to paint it. Uh, dish, Dawn dish soap or any kind of dish soap and Comet or something like that works really good. Wow. <laughs> What's, look how better that is already. I mean, it's still ugly oh. as hell. <laughs> but now it's now it's ugly and clean. At least it does come off. It cleans. Yeah. Yep. I've got some of that patina stuff from Sweet Patina. Oh, do you? This would be a good one to it test it on. It would be a good one to test it on. All right, let's do that. It's a little cold out here today. We're tired. Angus is going to head back. He's got three more days of work at old job to do a handoff. We'll come back to this tomorrow, and we will scotch bite the whole truck and prep it for the sweet patina sauce. I'm a, I'm very curious to see what that's it might like. Be really cool. Yep. You know what's going to happen, Tom? It's going to be too cool. <laughs> yeah, that's what. We're not going to sell the damn too thing. Too cool for school. Yeah. Before we had a beer about it, we decided to go for a quick rip first. <laughs> piece of art you did here. Yeah, look at that. Can't help but wonder what all these drips are. Well, I'm sure that's not important. Today's video is brought to you by Purity Debt Solutions. Getting into debt is something that's very easy to do, sometimes completely on accident, but getting out of debt is something that is quite difficult, especially in today's economy. And unlike hanging in the shop on a Friday night, the sooner you can get out of there, the better. And that is exactly what Purity Debt Solutions is here to help you with, getting out of debt. Purity Debt Solutions has customized options for anyone struggling with credit cards, personal loans, collection, or medical bills. If you're making payments every month on your debt and your balances aren't going down, this program is for you. They provide options that help consolidate all of your debt into one low monthly payment. Everyone with $10,000 or more in eligible debt qualifies and there is no minimum credit score required. Both bad and fair credit are accepted. Purity Debt Solutions cares about helping you get out of debt. They can save you thousands on interest and fees, and you can pay off your debt in a fraction of the time. There's a reason they're a top-rated company on Google and have an a rating on the Better Business Bureau. Purity Debt Solutions is offering you guys a free debt analysis, and it only takes 30 seconds. Head over to pdsdebt.com junkyard to get your free debt assessment today. Once again, that is pdsdebt.com junkyard. All right, let's get back to the video. We're getting rid of the Chevy emblem off the GMC. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Big one! <laughs> hell yeah, what do you want, engineer beer? Well, <laughs> hell, now I'm seeing that there's pretty good paint under all that oxygen. This is pretty color one. <laughs> <laughs> we ought to buff it now. Oh, we don't have to buff it. <laughs> the tool did a bigger burnout than the truck. <laughs> More power. <laughs> You know, Angus, there's good paint under there. Where? Maybe, maybe we ought to just keep, just keep going with that tool. <laughs> this is ugly. I don't know what to do about this fender being blue. Well, no wonder the back window leaks so bad. It's open. Oh. Oh. Well, that's not. Yeah, that's that's just not how out. they work. <laughs> I had a 70 Chevy pickup one time. I put one of these in, and then, like two or three days later, I threw a 2x4 in the back, and it hit the spare tire that was laying there, and went right through one of these windows. Is it bounced off the tire? <laughs> right off the tire. <laughs> Oh God! You have bad luck with. Put oh, I got bad luck. You can just stop there. I push it to the absolute <laughs> limit all the time. So. Well, you got another story where you put a, a sunroof in a car, right? Well, yeah, we put a sunroof in my GTO, and we were driving around, having fun, sticking our hands out the window, making friendly gestures to folks. 
I got home that night and stuck it in and headed to work or headed to Clarion the next day for paint. Met a semi and it blew out and hit the back of the trunk lid and hit the road and it shattered. I didn't have it flashed quite right. So my friendly son, gestures. <laughs> friendly gestures. <laughs> Thumbs ups. We only do. We only do friendly gestures. But you want them to see it, so you use your longest finger for the <laughs> yeah, thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your longest thumb. <laughs> How do you know which thumb's the longest? Well, just look at them. Yeah, I'd say it's this one. <laughs> you did go to school in Belmont. Didn't you? Make some modifications. I got some glue. Where the hell did you find that? Doesn't matter. It's perfect. What's it's amazing. amazing. Don't you think that ought to be on there? <laughs> I can't disagree. Kind of meant to be. It kind of fits perfect. Oh, I got the double bubble I brought out here once. Oh, there you go, double bubble. We could double bubble that on. Got this from the army. You it's got clear. It. it is. It'll mix white and dry clear, and it is strong as hell. We could glue Angus's butt cheeks together forever. Ooh, I don't want to ever think about that. I don't want you to do it either. <laughs> it's not about what I'm you sorry, want. I said it. I think I'll leave now. It'll, it'll, she'll set up in about five minutes. Well, it will that. flow a little. Perfect. Now don't scratch the paint. Well, that's a weird looking hammer. Ooh, this is actually genius. Okay. Adjustable wrench on the inside to give him more leverage. I would have never thought of this. <sighs> Holy shit. <laughs> Sweet. What All right. That? Straight to Barrett Jackson. Looking pretty secured. I suppose with that, we'll see you guys in the morning where we will scotch break this son of a gun and give it the makeover it deserves. After that, we'll get it ready to sell, which probably means it'll be the shop truck for a bit until we're bored of it, it breaks really bad, or we get it done to the point that it's worth money we can sell for a decent price. See you then. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This morning, you join me as we leave Tom's. I had Moot give me a ride home last night before I had a couple drinks, and that is a responsible thing to do. No point in winding up in jail, endangering anybody, or wrecking an old truck. We have a lot of fun on the channel, but remember, do not drink and drive. Either way, we are now headed back to the shop where we are going to begin work on this old girl. We've got some scotch spray, some soap, some common, all the good stuff, and we're ready to give this sucker a makeover. Let's get to it. Eager to see how the truck would turn out, I set straight to work. As I sanded on the hood, I quickly realized there wasn't nearly as much paint there as we thought, and I ended up wearing through the metal in quite a few places. Ironically, as I continued my way around the side of the truck, I realized this would be far less of a problem than I ever thought. In fact, in the end, this would become the ideal look for the truck, especially because of the passenger side rear fender. There was this suspicious and crappy dark blue aerosol paint all over the quarter panel, and I really wanted to get rid of it and bring it back to the original blue. However, as I started sanding, I realized it was there because it was covering Bondo. A lot of Bondo. At this point, this went from a quick scotch bright to a full bodywork attempt. Well, as close as I get to one. I sanded on the truck for an entire day, removing as much Bondo as I could from that bedside. Not only was there a lot of body filler, but it was put on really poorly. Hell, it looked like someone tried to smooth this with a garden rake at one point. By now, I decided if I was going to go all out, I might as well go all out and make this whole truck color match to be blue, black, and bare steel. With a bunch of clear coat on it, it should look pretty damn good. The whole right side of the truck, however, had been hit and redone at one point, so panels such as the front right fender weren't quite on par with the patina of the rest of the truck. I didn't want to have an all blue fender that didn't match, so I sat down for a couple hours with a piece of scotch bright and wore through four layers of paint until everything looked eh, natural enough to blend in. Alright, well, to say the least, this has spiraled a little bit out of control. Right now, as you can see, I have this taped off. I'm going to hit this with some black primer, which is what GM used originally. And then I've got some of our best attempt at color matching this from O'Reilly's with the metallic in it and everything that I'm going to spray over that. And then I'm going to try to fade that down to just cover all this, but still show the same steel to black primer to blue that the rest of the truck is doing. And at this point, I have so much effort into this, I think we're going to hit this with a clear coat. I think we'll do front fenders, hood, roof, and fender wells with a clear coat, and then the rest with the uh, patina sauce. Oh, I'm so nervous about this. I, I've never ever tried to paint on a vehicle before. Pretend I am a paint gun. 
I really like how that's a fan pattern. And this Duplicolor stuff, you can get everything we have here from O'Reilly's, including those scotch Bright pads. They got them, you can get a whole damn box of them this big for 30 bucks. And by the way, you're going to need like three full sheets to do the cab as it was without all this stuff. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, let's let that clear, give her a couple more coats, and then scratch that up since it's sandable primer, give us a better surface to adhere to, and start the paint runs. Right, as you can see, our primer has set. It's cured for a couple hours. I sanded it down again, scratched it up, leveled it out. It's gonna look like crap, but so does the rest of the truck. see where I may need more than one can of this. All right, let's let that tack up and hit it again. After a couple more nervous rounds of aerosol paint, the fender was actually looking pretty good. Wow. Well, it looks like absolute ass because of the surface under it. Even with all that sanding, you can still see how bad it is. Now with one even coat, it looks worse than it ever did before, but it's the right color. And that's what we're going for, getting the right color so that now I can knock this back down with the sandpaper and blend it into the fender. And hopefully, you won't even know. You'll probably know. Just go on a limb. With the largest spot done, I continued on to paint the other three patches. Surprisingly, the one $17 can of aerosol paint from O'Reilly's was exactly the amount I needed to finish this job. I let the paint cure overnight and came back the next morning to pull all the tape and get to work on sanding. Alrighty, good morning folks. Welcome back to what is hopefully the last day of working on the Chevy this week. Our paint had plenty of time to cure last night. It looks pretty good. This morning I came in and removed all the tape and this is what we're looking at. Now the paint match isn't perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. And hopefully when I knock this down with some sandpaper here, it'll take some of that sheen away and make it match a lot better. I ran the tape line in the middle of our steel sections, which go steel, black, blue. This way I can take the sandpaper and make this go steel, black, blue this direction as well. And it should blend in a lot better. Let's find out. Now it stands to reason at this point you would be looking at this and saying, Kevin, what the hell are you doing? This is a ton of work for a truck that still has no cab corners, the rockers are gone, the fenders are rotted out, and the floor is missing. You would be totally correct, and I agree, it is way too much work for this old rust bucket, but this is practice for me. Ever since I got my Wildcat and it got rained on the first time, I've always wanted to figure out how to effectively clear coat patina and make it look wet all the time. To do that, I need to practice and I need to see what happens if they sit out in the UV light for a long time or number of years or whatever and see exactly how long it will last and perfect a few ways to do it. On top of that, I wanna learn how to do repairs such as this where I can blend patina into a panel and make it look natural. For my first attempt ever at doing any of this, this came out pretty decent. I'm happy with the results and I learned a lot to make it even better next time. In fact, I think I actually learned enough that I might have a thing or two to share with you guys. So let's rewind to when I was halfway done with this panel and I'll show you what I learned. All right, it's been an hour. I've been working on this for a while. I've learned quite a bit as I go here and I think I have some advice to give if you guys are looking to patch over something and match it like this with patina on your own. Our cab color is a little different, but back here where I sanded this down, that's actually a really, really good match. I'm quite happy with that. Anyway, this is what I've learned. Make sure before you start, you take a bunch of pictures of all the spots where you are uh, going to be sanding so that you have a map to follow to know where your color is and all that. In my case, with this bare steel, it makes this really easy because I could just put my tape line in the center and then fade into this color such as this and it matched on each side. In the case where you're going paint to paint, it's gonna be a little more difficult because the primer is gonna pop up on top of the blue and it's gonna give you this halo like this where it doesn't blend in quite as well. And while I'm pointing to this, don't do what I did. Remember that GM uses more than one color of primer. This is brown, that's black. <laughs> the front clip is all black primer, the cab is brown. And on this truck, the fenders are uh, black primer as well. When you put your tape lines down in that gap or wherever you're going to land it, if you're on steel like this, give yourself more room than I did. 
because if you break into the old paint you'll have a little bit of a double layer like that you can see that's the old paint this is the new paint and it kind of pokes out around a couple edges and while I'm pointing at this this reminds me start on the bottom learn to do it down here where it's not super obvious all this looks much better than this because I started here and I didn't have my method quite perfected and I ran out of room by the time that I got into that blue so this this spot right here looks a little meh and I bumped some bondo here and here so again give yourself plenty of room to uh, feather that out if you can avoid long straight lines with the tape like this right here is going to be a nightmare for me to do what you gotta do is take that scotch brite and break up that whole edge and eat it away so if you have something like this like a ripped tape edge it makes a lot more natural line already with far less sanding such as right here was a piece of tape that was a lot easier to do than say this line or this line or all these lines are going to be this is going to be a nightmare as far as the sanding itself goes i take some soapy water spray it on here grab the corner of my red scotch bright pad and just whittle away at that paint until i get some black there don't want to go too far in until you get a big fade spot like this after that i come in with a very fine scotch bright pad the gray ones and i do some little circles and get that fade to uh, extend into the paint with this guy. And then I take some thousand grit wet sanding paper and kind of hit it all and remove any marks that might be left from the scotch Bright pads. All of this with soap and water and a rag and wiping off the excess stuff as I go. And then once that's all done, if you want, you can come through and find some high spots from your photos before and sand them out. And it really adds a little more life to the paint instead of just being a big, blue spot like this one's gonna be this one's gonna be more difficult but it is the last piece so let's get her done all right there we have it i added some details to balance stuff out get rid of this large blue piece we have here we'll have a marker light in here to help with that as well but yeah i am very pleased with how this came out definitely next time i'm gonna leave myself a little more space so i don't run into the paint the black and blue below it's kind of goofy in a couple spots, but honestly, from even a couple feet away, this is pretty good. I'm very satisfied with the results. I believe I still need to do the roof because I forgot all about that. Got too distracted with this stuff. Once that's done, we can drive this out the tops and hit it with the clear coat and see what it looks like. I am really excited. God, this came out so much better than I anticipated. Maybe there's a little bit of my dad's body man jeans in me after all. Probably not, actually. This would probably make him throw up if he saw what I just did. With the paintwork finally done, I took the big stupid things off the roof and instantly the truck looked so much better. Unfortunately, they used huge deck screws so there's massive holes in it, but I'll deal with that another day. The last step before I headed out the Toms was to give it one last bath before we hit it with clear. One thing I do want to mention, if you guys are working with bare steel such as this, don't let water evaporate off of it. Try to wipe it dry as fast as you can or it'll cause it to flash rust. If it is going to be sitting exposed for a while, pick up some of this stuff and spray it all over the bare steel. This is a water-based sealer that doesn't screw up paint, there's no oil or silicone in it, and it just washes off with a bit of soap. Of course it rains today, I just washed this, I'm gonna have to wash it again. Damn it. All right, transformation time, here we go. What do you think? We can try to make it uglier. <laughs> I think I've already done plenty of that. <laughs> a lot of work. It's almost as much work as making it pretty. This is the side I didn't do anything to. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's just about the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Well, you don't got to lie. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually kind of coming out looking pretty good. Not a lot left for prep. We're just going to hit it all with some wax and grease remover. Really clean up those panels. It also gives us a good preview of what she's going to look like. I am excited. Now a few portions of the truck still need metal work done, so we're going to avoid spraying clear on those. To do that, we taped them off, and Tom had an ingenious way to make a soft line. Those tips we experience. don't want to clear the whole fender, and we don't want a hard edge anywhere. So we'll go along this feature line. Just half of it down. Roll it back over itself. Okay. Right along there makes kind of a softer edge. And you can take another piece of tape, work that out, lay it right on there. 
then you can bring it around keep that soft edge where it's rolled around and then you can pull it off sometimes if it's not quite dry yet it's better and let the paint kind of flow to take a pretty good guy to catch it normally if everything's shiny it'll be interesting to see how this looks but true we're experimenting with that we masked everything off mixed up the clear and tom started working his magic Now, if you haven't caught on already, this is all just an experiment for us to learn how this works. And honestly, all the metal on this truck is bad already. If it's not already rusty or half body filler, it's bent or dented. So when it came to things like taping off all the trim, we just skipped it because we did not care. Except for our hood ornament. We really cared about that guy. Dupla color patina. <laughs> if you don't wow. like that, you just don't like me. <laughs> I think that looks actually incredible. I'm excited to see it once it dries. Well, it'll just be sort of a semi-gloss. Which is totally what I would prefer. What you're aiming honestly. for. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. It's that wet look. Yeah. Look at that. This will be the perfect test, because I've wanted to do this in my Wildcat, which I've been waiting on engine parts for four years. But we want to see how this clear holds up. Then we're going to do the doors and lower fenders with the Sweet Patina uh, preserver. So we'll have all that test in one vehicle. With that being said, I set to work on applying that product to the doors and it came out a little more matte than I was hoping, although it was landing on a scotch brighted surface. The patina sauce was definitely the easier way to do this if you guys were looking to do it at home a lot faster with a lot less prep work, but it does need to be reapplied more often. Although you could also argue it would be a lot easier to strip it off and prepare for paint if you ever wanted to paint a car than it would with clear. I was impressed with how little it took to do this door and if the car didn't soak up a bunch, I bet you could get two cars out of a bottle. A bottle runs about 50 bucks and for all the materials I used, including the special paint for the fender and everything, I think we were about 75 to 100 for all the clear and stuff from O'Reilly's. So in the end, it all comes down to application and preference. Would I put clear on something I hope to someday actually paint? No, I would not. Do I think it looks absolutely badass on this truck? Yes. Yes, I do. Does my dad? Well, I don't know. Let's ask him. What do you think? That's awesome. When are you going to paint it? <laughs> <laughs> Told you. <laughs> Please tell me we're not doing your GTO like this. No. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> throw it all off. I mean, maybe you should have hit them, but that is amazing. This is the shiniest turd we've ever created. Shiniest turd ever. Well, Tom, thank you very much. Yes, sir. I guess I'm back to the shop to wrap things up. Well, I suppose the question at this point is now what? Still squeals them though. This is a good run in 305. This thing's pretty good for all used parts that we did last episode. I still think as far as parts go, we're not a thousand dollars into this truck. I originally bought it for 3500 so for 4500 dollars to have a truck that now looks pretty damn good, minus the doors. I need new doors. Which by the way, if anyone local to central Iowa has blue Chevy doors, the bright blue, pink code 25, uh, I'll buy those please and thank you. Well, it still smells like 
piss in here and it's really gross. But besides that, the exterior of this truck, minus the doors, looks awesome. Look at that. That is just so damn cool. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have this week, so I'm gonna have to stop here, but we are still a long ways from done with this truck. And unlike in the beginning of the video, I don't think I wanna sell it anymore. I think I wanna build this into the shop truck for here at the shop. It needs doors, cab corners, rockers, floors, fender bottoms, you know, the usual for a square body from the north. Alongside that, the clutch slips a bunch, the interior needs a bunch of work, there's no rear tail lights or anything, the speedometer doesn't work, the list, goes on and on. There is plenty of stuff left to be done on the old Chevy in another episode. With that being said, thank you to everyone who helped me with this truck in this episode. Best way to support the channel is to check out some merch on junkairdigs.com and we'll see you right here next week for another episode.